Hello, everybody, and welcome to another, another episode of Marvel Champions. Off to a good start, stumbling over my words, but I am here on Escape the Museum. Collector A1, B1 instead if you're in expert mode. Escape the Museum, Galactic Artifacts, Ship Command, and Standard Encounter Sets, and one modular set, in this case recommended, Menagerie Medley. Set up, put the Library Labyrinth environment into play, set aside the Ship Command modular encounter set. Flip this card. You've been trapped inside the Collector's Museum. Before you can escape, you must first find the Milano. Uh, force interrupt. When the last threat is removed from this scheme, advance to stage 2A, the players win by advancing. What the heck? We're, we're in Arkham now. So, 7 player doom. Uh, 11 is the threshold. We lose if this stage is completed. And the library labyrinth is this way. Hero action. Deal yourself one face down encounter card. Remove five threat from the main scheme. Limit once per round per player. Interesting. Okay. Seems like a wild time. The collector over here. One star scheme, one star attack. Collector gets plus one scheme and plus one attack where X is equal to the main scheme's current stage number. So we are on stage one. So it's currently two, two. So kind of spooky, a little bit spooky. When the collector would be defeated, remove three player threat from the main scheme and flip this card instead. Interesting. Okay. So we're still Ant-Man. We are in the wrong mode. We are in Scott Lang mode. Time to unwind. After change this form, heal one damage from Scott Lang. Hand size is six. Let's see what our opening hand gives us. Well, Ant-Man's helmet is really good. We know that from the last one. Uh, strength is also really good because it helps us get to where we want to be. Uh, combat training, while, like, obviously still good, um, is, I mean, like, we can go about it in multiple ways, right? We only need to deal 8 damage to kill him, and then I imagine something happens when it flips to the other side. Um, I think we can get rid of this ready to rumble. I think the surprise attack can also go. I mean, I think realistically we're going to use one of these to pay for one of those. But I think we actually just don't need that right now. Honestly, let's just see what we draw. We'll keep this just in case. And actually, this is pretty good. This is a really nice opening hand, I think. Okay, so let's talk through this. So let's say we play this. We play the helmet. We switch to tiny mode and we start removing threat from this scheme. I don't know if we want to just bum rush this or if we want to like take our time with it. I don't know what strategy is better. We could drop down an energy to deal with things as well. It's probably, sorry, energy to drop down the combat training. But we also could, in theory, drop down the Hulk. Because the Hulk could actively attack the collector for a bit. Which could be a good thing. Which could be a good thing. I also really want to know what's on this other side. So we are going to actively try to defeat him. So what we are going to do is we are going to start by what I think is going to... I mean, these smashing the problems are really good. I think we're going to realistically, though, use that smash the problem to pay, play the helmet. And then we're going to switch into tiny mode. Whoa, what the heck? And after changing to tiny mode, we'll draw a card. If you're in tiny form, exhaust it to deal one damage to an enemy. Okay, so I actually value this more than I value that on this given board state. Because one damage every turn, I mean, assuming we're in tiny mode, which I imagine we're going to be in tiny mode for a lot, because uh, if you can hide from your problems, everything is a little bit easier. So, we are going to drop down the Hulk. Oh, sorry. After we change this form, remove, remove a threat from a scheme. There also are, is the ability printed on our card. We can't forget about that. We're going to put down the Hulk and see if he lasts for more than one attack. We're going to drop an army of ants as well. We'll use the army of ants to ping the collector, and then the Hulk will move in. He's going to deal three damage to the collector, putting one on him. And then we will discard the top card of our deck. It's a fist, so we'll deal two damage to an enemy. That seems like a pretty good first turn. Uh, we're then going to remove two more threat from this, which obviously like isn't a gangbusters amount of threat, but it's still a, a good chunk. It's still a good chunk. Okay, so 
we now go into upkeep where we will uh, discard cards, drop to our hand size, then ready. You, you think I would know it by now, but I really don't. Interesting. Interesting. So I think we actually might play this Avengers Mansion this turn, depending on what ends up happening here. Okay, so we place one threat on this. This guy's going to attack for one. We're just going to let it come through undefended. So we'll just take one damage. Uh, sorry, two damage because of the scheme. So it's two damage. Then we will draw our evil card for the turn, which happens to be the Beyonder's Blazer. What the frick? Attached to the enemy with the highest scheme. Plus, I don't know what that symbol means. Amplify icon. The amplify icon increases the number of boost icons on boost cards. When a boost card is turned up during an enemy activation, add one additional boost icon for each amplify icon in play. Here action, place two threat on the main scheme and spend two resources of the same type to discard this card. Okay. Well, that's a little bit, admittedly, a little bit spooky. We're not, we're not too much of a fan of that. So, it is now our turn, though, which means we have the entire world at our fingertips. So, hmm, what do we got here? What do we got? Okay. How scared are we of this blazer? It honestly seems a little bit spooky. It honestly seems a little bit spooky. So we could just clear our way through this. It gives us an encounter card, which I don't know if is necessarily too spooky. I think what we do is we start with a Hulk attack. I want to see what's on the other side here. One second, I just have to look at giant mode again. Okay, sorry. I think what we do is we actually start by putting two threat on this. We remove two threat. We then switch to giant mode. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. We deal one damage to an enemy on tiny mode, and then we switch to giant mode to deal one damage to an enemy. So, when the Collector is defeated, we remove three threat from the main scheme. We flip this card instead. The Collector- oh my god! Collector cannot be defeated. When the round ends, flip this card, then select Collector's hit dial to his printed points. So, he had, we reduced his attack. Okay, so we not only put progress on our objective, but we also reduced his attack by a reasonable amount. And that's only going to get more reasonable as it goes, because the villain phase happens at the end of the round, right? And that's how this game works. I'm asking these questions and I know the answer for it. But I still just have to read it, just in case. Okay, so... When the last start is removed from this stage, advance to stage 2A. Okay. The Milano is being held in a massive container. You try to pry open the side, but ultimately resolve to smash in the glass as hard as you can. I'm just going to say right now, uh, this scenario, the concept of it and how it's working is really fun. And it feels very different than all the other scenarios I've played so far in this game. Which makes me really excited for <clears throat> potential design space to explore. When revealed, put the set aside Milano support from the ship command and counter set into play under the first player. First player controls it. As an uh, we can exhaust it to generate a wild resource for any player. That's pretty sick. Hit points infinite. Incredible. Alright, so then what does this reveal? Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Now that you've broken the Milana out of its cage, and it's doing just fine, use it to find the front door. When the last threat is removed from this scheme, advance to 3A. Players win by advancing. If this stage is completed, the players lose the game. Okay, I'm just going to pause again one second. I'm just doing some other stuff. Well, I'm like kind of multitasking a bit, but we're going to still kill it. Okay. Same thing, just a lot of threat. So the threat's kind of like, it's not spooky high, 
Sorry, we also healed two damage from our hero because of we changed form. Uh, it's not like spooky high, but it is noticeably high. All right, so what we do is we're going to... Oh, I wanted to play this in tiny mode. I've already gone too far, so we're just going to accept... We're just going to accept that I made the mistake, but luckily the thing I was dealing with in the, on the back line is now solved. So I can now put 100% of my focus into this. Okay, so we got that. Beautiful. Uh, we have this nice juicy card here. Max one per player. Exhaust Avengers Mansion. I will choose to draw a card. Hmm. Yeah, I'll play that, that Tiny Ants as well. That seems really good coming up here. So we are noticeably going to get an attack here that has at least plus one boost, but I think, honestly, things are going fine. We're going to go to Tiny Mode. Well, we're going to go to Tiny Mode next turn. Oh my god, we actually can play Wasp. We actually play Wasps and Swarm Tactics and Resize. This next turn looks a little bit fun. This next turn looks a little bit fun. All right. So we place one threat on the scheme. This guy is going to attack. He attacks for zero, plus one will take one damage. I have never felt better. Evil card for the turn is none other than the poison attached to your identity. When your turn begins, place one poison encounter here, then take one damage for each poison counter here. We have to spend three different resources to get rid of that. All right, we do want to solve that problem, but I just think the reality is we don't solve that problem right now. So we'll place a poison counter here, and then we'll take one damage. Hulk, help me. End of the round. Sorry, this guy flips back. That's end of the round, right? When the round ends, flip this card, and then select the collector's hit point dial to his printed hit point icon. Fun. Okay, very fun. Well... So, when Wasp Hunter plays, place one pin counter on her for each lightning resource you overpaid for her cost. Oh, okay. Okay, so we need to specifically play lightning resources. But when we play a wild resource, it can be any resource, right? They must specify what type it is. Okay. So, I think what we want to do is we want to start by drawing a card with the Avengers Mansion. Uh, that seems pretty good. Just nuke him out of the uh, nuke him out of the sky. That's probably better than a, a three health wasp. That's probably better than a three health health wasp here, right? Okay. Well, I think we're gonna actually start with the Hulk. Hulk's gonna deal two damage to the collector. Uh, sorry, three damage to the Collector. And then we're going to discard the top card of our deck, which happens to be another Fist, so we're going to deal two more damage to an enemy. This is really nice because Ant-Man, giant form. Ooh. I mean, we can just nuke him again, right? Flip him over. Sorry, we get th uh, remove three threat. We can just flip him again. That does seem a little bit spicy. That does seem a little bit spicy. Okay. There's two giant stomps in my deck, I think. I think it is. It's because there's two... There, there might be two. I'm not 100% on that, but that's what my gut's telling me. So we have a lot of interesting choices to make here. But I think realistically the best one is we're going to change to tiny form. We're moving a threat from this scheme and drawing a card. No. Sorry, I'm going back. I'm not changing the card on top. We're staying in giant mode. Okay. No, no, no. I think I think I know what the plan is here. We resize. So we change to our tiny form which removes a threat from the scheme. We're going to draw a card. 
we're going to draw a card off of this. Hive Mind. Play only if you're in tiny form. Remove two threat from a scheme. Remove one additional threat from that scheme for each army of ants you control. That seems really strong. <laughs> that seems really strong. I did not take my damage from this poison. I'm missing a lot of things, but I'm trying to like formulate... I think I have some really potential strong lines to follow here, and I'm just making sure I hit them all. We haven't done a manual... Um, we haven't done a change our manual change our form yet. So we actually can still do one of those when the time comes. So I think we're going to play Wasp and we're going to make a Lightning Bolt and a Lightning Bolt. All right. So then she gets plus 1 hit point for each pim counter, so she's going to enter with two pim counters. Want to display place one pimp counter on her to a maximum of three for each lightning bolt resource we overpaid. We're going to use this surprise attack to play for this swarm tactics. Change to your other hero form. We're going to heal. And we'll deal one damage to an enemy. Take that, collector. Uh, and then we ready our hero. We're now going to do our manual switch into tiny mode, which allows us to draw a card and remove a threat from a scheme. And honestly, that's a good draw. Not because I'm going to play it, but because I'm actually going to... Uh, three resources of different types. <sighs> the problem is, if I'm not going to solve this poison now, when am I going to solve it, right? So I think I'm... Uh, as much as I want to play this hive mind, I don't think we're in a situation where... It's bad. And I know if I don't solve this poison, like, now... But the thing is, if I can just... I mean, I can, I can take it one more turn. We're in tiny form. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. This might be a little bit... This might be the wrong line. But I'm gonna remove two threat from a scheme. And then remove one additional threat for each army of ants I control. So we're gonna go down to three. I'm going to thwart with Ant-Man. Hell, I'm going to thwart with Wasp, too. We might as... No, 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 no. No, I don't think we need to. Can we kill him next turn? Potentially. Probably. We represent 8 damage with Hulk and Ant-Man. I think we do. I think we do just do this here. Last time this was good, so let's hope the same here. When revealed, flip library labyrinth. Oh, that's not good. Museum ship, hold on to your butts. Forced, when the villain phase begins, choose one. Exhaust the Milano. Exhaust the Milano and assign two player damage indirect among all players. Assign three indirect damage among all players. Interesting. Really fun. Okay. Place one acceleration token on the main scheme. Bing. Shuffle the remaining cards from the set aside ship command encounter set into the encounter deck. All right, this starts with eight on it. Exhaust the Milano, remove three threat from here. If there is no... Place one acceleration token on the main scheme. Oh, no, acceleration token. That's these things, not this thing. I got it. Okay, that is a little bit spooky, to be honest. This could actually result in us losing. Um, first player action. Okay. I think we'll ultimately be okay, but that is still just moderately spooking. Spooky. The team up just said Ant-Man and Wasp, right? Did it not specify which one? Okay, good. This is my first time playing a team up card. I'm pretty sure I did that right. If I did it wrong, let me know in the comments. That smashed the problems really good. Alright, so this goes up to 10, which, as I said, is actually somewhat scary. This guy's going to attack for 0. We're going to take 2. Go to 10. Evil card for the turn. That 
that's a really rough time for this to show up. Are we okay to stay in tiny mode? Realistically, probably, right? So we can choose to discard a card from our hand. I mean, it's gonna be you. Okay, but the question is, can we get out of here this turn? We're gonna start by drawing a card. This Smash the Problem is looking a lot worse. I'll tell you that much right now. Mm, sorry, he flips. Okay. Well, I think no matter what, we're not, we might not win this turn because of that, uh, our obligation. However, I think that we can at least, we'll, we'll be at a comfortable point. So we're actually going to start with her. She's going to drop three damage on this guy, which is going to defeat her. But she has done her job, and I think she's done it pretty well for a two-resource uh, character. Hulk's going to get another attack in. We're going to attack for three. Discard the top card of our deck, and it happens... Oh, sorry. We had to take poison. Oh, we have to do this too. So Sorry. Uh, I wanted to assign two, which would have put one here, one here, and one there. You guys will forgive me for that. I just forgot about this. When the villain phase begins, assigned, I wanted to assign two direct damage to all players with the Milano exhausted. Because it would have killed her if I didn't. I just missed it, but I think we're all good. This is exactly what we want. Anyway, Hulk has drawn this, so we're going to deal two damage to an enemy, which removes three threat from this. This guy flips. We take one damage, and then we discard the Hulk. And I think we got a great Hulk value there. So I have to remove seven, seven threat. I don't know how likely that is. But we're stuck in tiny mode. Well, we're going to remove two. Oh, no, I think we haven't won, but this is really good. Three. We're going to play Wasp over here. And then after she enters play, deal two damage to an enemy if you're in giant form, or remove two threat from a scheme if you're in tiny form. And then we will use her to remove two more from this. Uh, and then I think we discard this, and we ready. We draw five cards. Okay. That's a really strong card. All right. This goes up to three. Sorry, when the villain phase begins, I can assign three indirect damage. Uh, this is then going to go up to three. This guy's going to attack, and Wasp is going to defend. Wasp is done. And then... Sorry, this guy also flips. No, he flips at the end of the round. And then we draw our evil card. Cannonade, hinder three, run revealed, place three player threat here. First player, exhaust the Milano, remove three threat from this scheme. It does not have the crisis icon, so I think we're like, it's pretty okay. Uh, round ends, turn begins. What did I tell you about poison if I didn't take that chance? So this poison is slowly killing us. But we can get out of here A-OK. -okay. Can we? Oh my god, can, can we not? Are we actually... We might die. We're gonna draw a card. No, army of ants, this is not the time. This is not the time. Uh oh, we might die. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, we can first play or we can remove three threat from this scheme. We can just get off the shit. We can just get out of here. I also can heal my... Oh, my God. That's why, that's why I didn't exhaust this. I thought for a second we were actually done. I thought that it was over. And I was like, oh... 
This is just it for me, huh? Yeah. Wow. Man, that uh, obligation is pretty spicy. That's pretty spicy. Um, this, this scenario is really cool. I think this scenario is a wild time. And honestly, it's probably... I, I found it very engaging. I, I really liked it. I really liked it. I probably, honestly, I probably got something wrong. Because like I said, I was a little bit, uh... I was a little bit distracted at the start of this, but I had a great time and I think I followed some interesting lines with Ant-Man there. I'm continuing to really enjoy him. He's very strong and very flip floppy, which is really engaging. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back very soon for another episode of Marvel Champions. Uh, have a good one. Uh, keep those comments coming. I like seeing comments on these series and it'll, it inspires me to shoot more of it. So if you wanna see more Marvel Champions, be sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and as always, GG's.